One of these films takes your jolly Christmas spirit and butchers it with an axe. The other film checks if any holiday spirit survived and pummels it to a pulp with a knuckle duster marked Ho Ho Ho. But which is the best? Silent Night, Deadly Night. Great title, but a little too similar to the film Silent Night, Bloody Night. Hey, 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 I've got dibs on Silent Night, Spooky Night. Get your own film. In a world where we already had Tales from the Crypt and Christmas Evil, producer Scott Schneid decided you could never have enough killer Santa pictures. After a Treehouse of Horror style credit sequence, <laughs> The film begins in a fashion not unlike most friendly Xmas content. Mummy, Daddy and their young sons Billy and Ricky are en route to visit Grandpa for the holidays. They discuss Santa Claus and generally have a gay old time. Don't break out the mulled wine just yet, because Grandpa actually lives in a mental hospital. In Utah. They give the old geezer their season's greetings, but he's not having it. He's practically catatonic. But look what happens when the family leave young, impressionable Billy alone with him. What for Dickens? Mom! What? Not only is Grandpa so over all the holiday bull shizzle, he actively strikes the fear of God, the devil, and Saint Nick into poor Billy. Go ahead, traumatize the kid. I could watch this performance all day. <laughs> Your daddy told you that, didn't he? He punishes. What about you, boy? You've been good all year? <laughs> you better run, boy. You better run for your life. Santa Claus only brings presents to them that's been good all year. <laughs> when the family returns, he doesn't miss a beat, and slips back into his comatose Colin routine. Fiendish. The discussion of Santa resumes in the car ride home, but Billy's take on the matter has been, rather understandably, warped. The concepts of naughty or nice, and brutal festive punishments, are established in fine order, which will resonate through the remainder of this sordid adventure. We then cut to a shop, where Santa, presumably played by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, kills two birds with one stone, taking out both the store clerk and an entire display of tasty salted snacks. This lousy robbery has not satiated his appetite, so he goes on the hunt for more milk and cookies. Pretending to suffer an automobile breakdown, he gets the drop on our little family. Daddy is blasted swiftly, bang bang, while Mummy suffers a more prolonged fate. Flea Santa slaps her about, and in a complete lack of regard for the temperature, exposes her chest. Mummy's fighting back saves her and us from a full-on assault, but it doesn't save her from a throat slitting. Billy sees it all. In fact, he's almost hunted down and murdered himself. Grim. Merry Christmas, kid. When I first saw this film as a young teenager, this scene broke me. The juxtaposition of the happy holiday time and this absolutely horrible event. The cacophony of the soundtrack, and baby Ricky's terrified crying playing out over it all, oh no no no, I hated it. The film lost me there and then, and never won me back. Like Billy, I had seen too much. Three years pass, and Billy and Ricky have been integrated into an orphanage. Good. I'm glad they found a new home, and it seems nice enough. Apart from that bitch of a nun, Mother Superior. She's the real villain here. Take a peek at this scene. She's presented like a bloody Catholic Terminator. <laughs> Oof, my spine is still tingling. But yes, it is clear that Billy is troubled by the world's worst case of seasonal depression. Every Christmas time, he starts to act out, misbehaving, 
drawing pretty graphic depictions of violence. Sister Margaret wants to help the little boy, putting together the very obvious link between this behaviour and the traumatic event three years ago. Mother Superior is a brick wall, flat out saying Billy remembers nothing and just needs to be punished. Yeah, 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 it's the same old story with this witch. Having sex? Punish! You spied on other people having said sex? Punish! Punch Santa in his stupid white beard? You better believe it! Punish! Needless to say, if Billy wasn't already doomed, he sure is now. Another ten years pass under the strict rule of the nuns. The good-natured sister Margaret wants to help the fully grown hunk Billy to get a job at the local toy store. Manager Mr. Sims is overjoyed with this strapping young addition to his team, and it seems that a new era of happiness and prosperity befalls the universe. Woohoo! Yippee! Your Christmas cheer is rejuvenated with a montage of Billy and friends living their best lives, sacking shelves, opening boxes and setting up holiday displays. Just when you could be excused for thinking it's the most wonderful time of the year, Billy meets a bully. Billy's done nothing wrong, yet this little twerp has the nerve to call him a moon goon. Moon goon! Moon goon! Moon goon! Savage. Oh. Worse still, Mr. Sims desperately needs someone to step up and play their store Santa. The task falls on Billy's shoulders. I don't bring toys to naughty children. I punish them severely. The festivities wear him down all day and all night during the store's Christmas Eve party. The straw that breaks Santa's back is when the bully tries to assault fellow colleague Pamela. Operating under the deranged notion of naughty people deserving punishment, Billy becomes a killer. Sister Margaret tries to check in on the boy, but after learning he had to dress up as Santa, the call is cut short because someone fell on a piano. He's playing Santa Claus for a bunch of snot-nosed kids. Margaret is too late. Billy massacres all his colleagues with a variety of different weapons. But this is all happening too fast! The film will be over too soon! Quick, fill out the runtime with more shots of nodding display units. Good, good. I really hope this film doesn't take place in the Toy Story universe, otherwise we're going to have a whole load of screwed up toys on our hands. <laughs> This town's troubles are only just starting. I mean, look at this carol singer's head. Cool Father Merrin. This chick's fucking possessed. Billy continues his killing spree, rampaging through a range of ugly brown interiors, slaying anyone he deems naughty along the way. A victim who must be highlighted is Linnea Quigley, who is guilty of not getting dressed to check on the cat and is punished by being hoisted on a mounted deer. Another noteworthy victim is the sled-stealing bully, who loses his head while showing off his uncanny James Brown impression. <laughs> Tensions spike when Santa Billy comes across a small innocent girl, eager to meet her holiday hero. Will he kill the child, or let her go? Well, this is a pretty grim film, so it's anyone's guess. Oh, but no. Get on your knees and praise Rudolph. He decides she can live, and even surprises her with the hottest Christmas item of 1984. Margaret rightly figures out he's ultimately heading towards the orphanage, where a lot of this madness originally flowered. It's the ultimate battle between good and evil. A nun versus Santa. Mother Superior fails to receive her comeuppance, at least not in this film, as Billy is cut down by an insignificant cop character. While Billy fades away, in what is actually a somewhat sad moment, given his history, we turn our attentions to Brother Ricky, who serves up a big old plate of sequel bit. Naughty. As I said before, until I made this video, the one and only time I saw Silent Night Deadly Night was long ago, and I despised it. 
re-watching it now, I had a surprisingly enjoyable time. While it is still pretty heavy at times, the first act in particular, it wasn't quite the Debbie Downer I recall it being. A strange thread of comedy pops up from time to time. You've got the overly cheesy work montage, and characters like Mr. Sims, who act as comic relief. Yeah. There aren't many, like, outright jokes, but there's just enough to lighten the mood at times. Still busy. I can't imagine who'd be on the phone so long. Better say goodbye now. Mother Superior wants us to write a note to Santa Claus. In other words, it is an 80s slasher through and through. If we ignore that we already have another Christmas killer named Billy who likes to spy on people and kill them, this film gives us a worthy, focused character. Following his trauma, in chronological order, sets Silent Night Deadly Night apart from many other slashers of the time. There's no mystery, no final girl or equivalent, just a full backstory from the off, and a clear motive before going all murdery. I also appreciate how Billy is unafraid to spice things up, and I'm not talking about the nutmeg in his eggnog. Every kill showcases a new weapon, which are always worked naturally into the scene. The storeroom offers leftover Christmas lights and a box cutter for cutting boxes and women. On the shop floor, the regulation fire axe is used, and the selection of toys and playthings gives Billy the opportunity to practice his archery skills. And yes, if you've got a mounted deer nearby, why not recycle it as a murder weapon too? Efficient, sustainable, and entertaining. Well done, Billy. To conclude this section of the review, Silent Night, Deadly Night is a pretty competent slasher film, and a lot of its initial critical negativity is unwarranted. You people have nothing to be proud of, even if you made a few bucks off of all the negative publicity. Your profits truly are blood money. And Silent Night, Deadly Night now has the distinction of joining I Spit on Your Grave as one of the two most contemptible films I've seen. And I don't mean to think it's campy, it really is quite mm -hmm. awful. But I would like to hear them explain to their children and their grandchildren uh -huh. that it's only a movie. Yeah. Compared to other contemporary horrors, it isn't excessively sleazy or anything. And the originally released cut was heavily trimmed down too, neutering the kill scenes, yet still upsetting the prudes. If anything, I'm surprised they weren't more favourable towards the focus on Billy's journey. This is not a simple masked man lazily killing college girls on a whim, it's a bit deeper. Not much deeper, but a bit deeper. I guess those critics were just like me on my initial viewing, and were blinded by the bleak intensity of the first 20 minutes. The film was successful enough to become a franchise, initially totalling five movies of varying quality, shall we say. The latter films are unrelated, and should probably only be watched on... Carpet Day! But in 2012, a loose remake emerged, shortening the title to Silent Night. Here we are on the 10th anniversary of Silent Night 2012. How does the plot differ from the 1984 original? Well, in 1818, Joseph Moore becomes the new assistant priest for the small Austrian town of Oberndorf. His idealistic methods include allowing drunken outcasts into the church choir, which causes him to butt heads with Father Nustler. Hold on. There is no Billy. There is no Ricky. No, this is pretty much a new plot. Instead of leading us through the sad life story of a boy who eventually becomes a Christmas killer, we begin with a fully formed Santa Slasher. He wears a plastic mask over his face, setting up a mystery angle that the original had no interest in. To be fair, this film barely cares either. The villain goes through town, killing anybody and everybody, seemingly at random. Some kills can be linked to the murderer's secret backstory, but he also snuffs a group of druggy soft porn punks and a bratty child. So the backstory doesn't really matter. This story is just about horrible people dying in horrible ways at Christmas time. Jolly, jolly, good Stefan. The rest of the plot is equally standard stuff. Jamie King, continuing her run of 80s slasher remakes, 
stars as policewoman Aubrey. Under the command of crusty asshole Malcolm McDowell, she has to investigate a series of dodgy Santa Clauses in the town, trying to capture the spree killer. Yeah, that about sums it up, yep. It is barely a remake, really. Like Black Christmas 2019, it's just another attempt to cash in on an established name. Not that there are hordes of people out there clamouring for a Silent Night Deadly Night reboot. The 2012 film only recreates two famous scenes, the grandpa scene and the stuffed deer kill. That's all, and it does them both badly. The grandpa scene comes out of nowhere, involving a character who is otherwise pretty unrelated to anything other than being a random victim later, and the deer kill feels a bit forced, a bit meh, especially when compared to Jiggly Quigley's version. The other kills branch away from the original. Aside from Malcolm McDowell turning into a cat, Meow. they are probably the only reason to watch the film. There's a handful of nitty gritty nastiness here that would appeal to certain horror crowds. This guy invents a new definition of a Christmas nutcracker. <laughs> the ho 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 knuckle duster got a little chuckle duster out of me. The flamethrower could have been an interesting main weapon, but it fails to excite me personally. And of course, a topless woman tries to hide near a wood chipper. I wonder what will happen here. How much wood could a wood chipper chip if, uh, nah, that doesn't work. You know what else doesn't work? This film. <laughs> Silent Night 2012 is that one really moody guy at the party who is pissed off that everyone else is having fun. Where's my Calvin Klein underwear and my cable TV? If you thought the original film was a festive downer, stick on the Bachman Turner Overdrive, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. This makes the 84 film look like the Polar Express. Actually, scratch that. Polar Express is more terrifying than either of these films. Still having nightmares about hot chocolate, fucking hell. <laughs> With the exception of fake Rob Reiner, every single character is an absolute lump of coal. Literally every character. Jamie King can just walk past the guy and say good morning, and their response would be FUCK OFF WOMAN! <laughs> it's bloody exhausting. The shifty nun who played a vital role in the original film has been replaced with a shifty reverend who has no bearing on anything, other than allowing the camera to zoom in on some carol themed breasts. The filmmakers did realise the irony of creating this sleazy character just so they could make these sleazy scenes, right? Right? The bad Santa knockoffs, grumpy cops, <sighs> obnoxious self centered ladies, even the kids are dicks. Honey, those are mommy's heart pills. I need those. You need to take me to the mall. Go get your purse and meet me in the car. Fuck church. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, this film is cynical to the point of boredom. It is impossible to be interested in anyone or anything when everybody is so mundanely abrasive. They show up, act like a knobhead for 30 seconds, then are bumped off. This formula repeats for 90 minutes. <sighs> Why am I wasting my breath? Actually, I'm a bit peckish. Just a minute, let me enjoy my burger. Let's have some cheese, some lettuce, ooh, some avocado. Don't put avocado on the burger. Holy shit, calm down. I'll put some hummus on instead. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger too. Fine, forget it, Malcolm, you absolute. Hell! Malcolm is a joy to watch, as always, I'll admit. It's a shame his character's fate is worse than a pair of socks under the tree. Oh, big mistake bringing a flamethrower to a gunfight. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, so don't bring a gun to a flamethrower fight, I guess? A limp death, but not as limp as the film's shocking twist. After Santa is defeated, but not killed, we see a flashback to the killer's origins. Tying into an urban myth we partially heard about earlier, a jealous husband went on a flamethrower spree against his ex, her new lover, and some other people. He got mowed down by Jamie's dad, but this event was witnessed by a child, the new Santa killer. Who cares? The film is already over by this point, and it adds approximately, hmm, shit all, to what came before. As I said, the kills in general are just random, untargeted, or at least they feel that way. If you think I'm a stupid idiot, please comment below with the exact words. Mr. Blowfish, I hope you choke on a Yule log. This new twist and motivation wasn't so much inspired by the original film, 
but by real events. On Christmas Eve 2008, a massacre occurred at a party in LA, as a spurned husband took revenge. I'd rather the filmmakers just stuck with Billy and the fictional horror, instead of tying into this real tragedy for inspiration, shock value, or notoriety. Enough depressing nonsense, here are the pros of the film. Malcolm McDowell, Jamie King, sometimes, a few of the kills are alright, and the Silent Night Carol is cleverly integrated into the soundtrack at times. Here are the cons of the film. Everything else. You know that traveling Santa, the one in the square? Seems he's been making kids cry. What? How? Maybe he got a boner. <laughs> Alright, ho ho bloody ho. Let's unwrap my verdicts. Best, Best villain. villain. Billy is an obviously much more realised character, so he is the easy victor here, without a doubt. He's sweet at the beginning, and his downfall makes perfect sense. He even tries to fight the insanity for a good while, so it is even more tragic when he succumbs. His end is touching too, surprisingly. I felt less than nothing when the new Santa was burned and then didn't even perish. What even was the killer's name here? I had to look it up after the fact. Ronald Jones Jr. Ooh. Best, Best cast. cast. With apologies to McDowell. The original also takes this win. Even putting Billy aside, you've got the delightfully sinister Lillian Chauvin as a sort of Nurse Ratched for the nun community. You've also got Britt Leach as the fun Mr. Sims, Gilmer McCormick as the likeable sister Margaret, and of course, the standout performance from James Brown. <coughs> Best Kills Despite the remake going harder and dirtier with the murders, I think, again, I choose the original. They are technically tamer and simpler, but they get the point across and actually feel like a cohesive spree, as opposed to random gory scene, after random gory scene, after random gory scene. Best, best kill, kill, kill. Oh dear. Best, best film, film. I choose Silent Night, Deadly Night. Shocker. Which film do you prefer and why? More importantly, do you put avocado on the burger? Let us know in the comments below.